Uh, very good evening uh, to all our viewers and uh, welcome to this week's edition of The Agenda. My name is Toivon Jabela, your host. Tonight we are very privileged to have uh, the Swapo Vice President uh, Netumba Nalindaitwa in studio. She is uh, also the Minister of uh, International Relations and also Deputy Prime Minister of Namibia. And she's a candidate to retain her party position. Uh, she's here to talk, uh, uh, to talk, to talk us through her campaign um, and uh, what lies ahead in terms of uh, her ambitions. Uh, Honorable, thank you very much for making time. Really a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much for inviting me yeah. and for giving me this uh, rare opportunity. <laughs> You're wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe the past couple of uh, weeks? Maybe, I don't know how many weeks now, maybe eight or so. You, you and other candidates for the top four Congress positions have been uh, going around the country, visiting regions, uh, speaking to delegates. A very different experience from what, uh, how it has been done in the, in the past. How, how was your experience this time? No, it was um, a very um, important experience. Yeah. Uh, as uh, you have rightly said, this is for the first time the Swapo Party has decided to design Mm. our internal campaign in a manner that was designed uh, specifically to give an opportunity for all the candidates to be traveling together mm. and uh, to meet delegates to the Congress. Mm. Uh, it was really exciting. You know, new things uh, always brings uh, new dynamics mm. and uh, makes one to be more innovative and uh, I must say that uh, uh, this uh, is uh, something that gives us a, a very good experience, mm -hmm. uh, particularly that um, the candidates were able to travel all the 14 regions. Uh, and uh, it has brought uh, a sense of uh, belonging uh, to party members mm -hmm. towards the party. Mm -hmm. uh, as uh, you might know, that uh, in every political campaign, uh, I call it is a, a political festivity. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you could see the, 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 the excitement uh, of party members. Yeah. So for me really, uh, as much as, as it was designed to have uh, an opportunity to candidate, uh, to uh, express or to engage the, 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 the delegates, uh, it has also rejuvenized uh, party members uh, towards their commitment to the party. Yeah. And uh, you could see a sense of uh, belonging to the party uh, really coming out so open. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm seeing this uh, as uh, a plus uh, in the sense that uh, uh, the party members were given an opportunity to be together, yeah. celebrating their membership to the party, by singing party songs and all these things, uh, being together for some of the days, I mean for a couple of days. And uh, it's something really to build on yeah. as we are working towards the uh, ensuring a solid unity among party members. Yeah. So it, it was really, that's one thing I can say, uh, it has added value yeah. to the unity of the party in addition now to giving an opportunity for the candidates to engage the candidate and to assess uh, their support yeah. as we are moving to the Congress. Absolutely. We've seen candidates holding hands, uh, um, as they enter halls and, and all that. Is there a, a, a genuine sense of unity or is uh, just to camouflage might be deep-seated divisions among candidates? Uh, for me, really, talking for myself, I see this candidate, all of us are united in ensuring that uh, Swapo Party should move forward mm. in unity and guided by the basic principle of Swapo Party, which is uh, uh, the solidarity, freedom, and justice. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not just a thing in term, uh, doing it in terms of a picture. I, I'm doing it uh, forward-looking 
because I know at the end of this campaign, whoever is going to come out, yeah. we must match as a united members of the party and uh, as candidate uh, will remain in history yeah. as having been candidate for the seventh uh, party congress. And to be a candidate, uh, it means you, are, you have moved a different level mm. in terms of leadership. So therefore, we need to be united uh, as we move forward. That's how I really see it. Wonderful. You, you have um, been involved in so many party campaigns in the past as a, as a cadre of the party, as a, as, a, as a senior leader of the party. Um, 2017 in particular was vicious. How do you draw comparisons between the two uh, campaigns, 2017, 2022, in terms of really safeguarding the unity in the party? No, uh, the 2017 is uh, safeguarding the unity uh, in the sense that all the candidates, they could sit in one room. Yeah. Uh, particularly, you mean 20, you mean 20, I mean 2022. 22. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I can tell you, for example, in every region, in the morning of the engagement, uh, before we go to the hall, uh, the regional leadership, they greet the candidate, and then uh, there we agree on how we are going to move. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, 2017, uh, we were moving in different direction, and uh, that has uh, created its uh, own situation, but uh, it's another experience. And uh, I think, uh, as you know, that uh, history is always a learned experience. Mm -hmm. And it's based on that history of 2017 that this time around we tried something new. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, uh, throughout is going to be evaluated. Mm -hmm. And then we see as we are moving, how do we perfect our internal campaign uh, to make sure that uh, after the campaign, we really uh, maintain the unity within the party, mm -hmm. which we need at all times. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. if, um, if unity was, in the con was not the main concern of the party uh, this time around, would you still have preferred uh, candidates having some sort of freedom really to, be, to address rallies publicly? Because at the end of the day, um, this may, might, may be a SWAPO internal campaign now, but even non-SWAPO members uh, somehow affected by if, <laughs> if Netumba Nadindaitwa is elected uh, next week and uh, she becomes and gets elected again in 2024, she becomes the president for all of us. Um, did you feel constrained a bit despite the good intentions of how the, the campaigns were de designed? Uh, I, I think uh, unity uh, will always be the core. Yeah. And uh, no matter how one can think it, but uh, if there is uh, anything uh, that will strengthen the party uh, in a way that we want it to be strong uh, and to remain uh, a party to reckon with yeah. in the Namibian politics, uh, that will be the choice that I can take uh, for it to be uh, the one to be followed mm -hmm. in our internal campaign. Uh, uh, of course, uh, our rules, which we are using now, uh, does not completely uh, rule out uh, any other means mm -hmm. of uh, delegate or candidate engaging delegates but uh, we have designed that mainstream that we have used uh, because uh, which has come to an end uh, last uh, Saturday yeah. when we met in Hardap. But uh, between now or between Saturday and the Congress, uh, candidates are still looking for support mm -hmm. uh, from delegates. Uh, you, you are right to say that um, the impact of uh, Swapo election does not only impact 
on party members, but uh, the general public. However, at this point in time, the candidate are looking for those who are going to cast their votes. Mm. Uh, uh, of course, uh, it's a common knowledge to everybody who are the candidate, uh, what do they stand for, and uh, there could be an inference uh, by non-party members or by non-delegates who in their own, they can talk to delegates and say, uh, please uh, swap all members as you are going uh, to the Congress, particularly we know it's not a secret that whoever will come out as a swap vice president uh, come 2024 is the presidential candidate for swap party. Mm. So you still find those who are having that interest to say, please to allow us also really uh, to support a swap, mm. you should give us this type of candidate. A failure to do that, uh, we, we, this is because this is the candidate we feel can take our country forward mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, our development and all national agendas. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, specifically now, uh, the focus is on the delegates uh, who are going to the Congress and of course party members who can influence them because they are delegated. Yeah. So those who are delegating them, they must also have an influence on them Absolutely. to say that uh, this is what we are sending you to do. Uh, otherwise, uh, it, it will not... Uh, uh, help uh, or to not save any purpose. Absolutely. Mm. You, you, you sp we spoke about um, 2017 and the lessons that we've learned from there. Uh, you've been vice president of the party during this period, uh, 2017 to now. Uh, how, how would you describe your, your, exp your experience in that position that you think warrants a re-election in that position or even to do better? Yeah. Uh, yes, um, first, as uh, a vice president, uh, your mandate is uh, driven from the Swapo Part Constitution, mm -hmm. uh, which specifically say that uh, as the vice president, you have to assist the president and to do any other work that is assigned to you. Mm -hmm. uh, the past five years have been some of the difficult years. Uh, in Namibia yeah. uh, with so many factors that have come in, uh, some of them external, uh, some of them natural. Uh, for example, the past five years, uh, we have been experiencing uh, disasters like uh, droughts. Uh, we have been experiencing world economic recession and uh, waste of it is uh, the past uh, two years that I call dead years because of COVID. And uh, as a ruling party, uh, we are the ones who are to guide. Uh, it's the party policies yeah. that are being implemented in terms of uh, managing uh, government activities and how we can guide the overall developmental agenda. Mm. And uh, as uh, a vice president of the party, I have uh, very good working relations with my president and uh, we consult regularly and uh, I have been assisting in the manner I can assist and uh, to perform the duties that are assigned. And uh, it's because of this uh, strong collaboration uh, within the party leadership that we have seen how the government, which is guided by the party policies and yeah. programs, uh, has managed to go through all these difficult years we experienced uh, uh, in the past five years. Yeah. Uh, you might realize uh, how we even managed uh, the COVID pandemic. And uh, that is uh, because uh, of the policies that we have adopted uh, based uh, on what uh, SWAPO has uh, uh, d decided or some of our resolutions. Mm. Uh, because for example, if you look at uh, uh, the resolutions from the sixth Congress, uh, and also when you look into the Swapo election manifesto, uh, there has been a, a great emphasis on uh, ensuring that we have a healthy nation. Mm. And uh, that is why all efforts were made uh, for us to pay attention uh, to this uh, health disaster. So that is uh, really the achievement that uh, 
we have managed to go through. Mm. Uh, we also managed, uh, you remember, we had uh, the 2019 uh, general election and the uh, 2020 uh, uh, municipal and regional elections. Mm. Uh, those elections we re took place against a very, very difficult uh, political background, yeah. uh, which was characterized uh, by this uh, uh, issue that came to be known now, the fish rod. Uh, you remember uh, when uh, one look at it, it was strategically made uh, really to bring about the fall down of Swapo, uh, because uh, the whole thing just came out on the eve of the special votes uh, and throughout uh, the, the, the voting process uh, we have really to uh, find a way how we can make sure that uh, as many people as possible mm. are, 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 are not influenced by such a serious allegations against the Swapo party. Mm. So you, 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 you note that uh, we even had a joint conference as party leaders, which is the, 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 the president, the vice president, the secretary general, and explain to the people. And uh, I believe if we have not taken such action, uh, we might have suffered more than what we have suffered. Definitely we suffered, mm. but uh, at least uh, when we talk about the National Assembly, we maintain our majority. Even we lost uh, that uh, two-third majority with one seat, but at least uh, looking at how uh, the whole thing was designed to bring Swapo down. Mm -hmm. uh, working together, we managed really to make sure that Swapo maintain its majority in the National Assembly. And uh, when we came also to the regional and local authority, uh, uh, of course also the president, our president, uh, maintain, uh, won the election and uh, maintain his position to serve a second time yeah. as the president of the country. Uh, at the regional and local authority, uh, we have suffered those setbacks, uh, but uh, at least we remain uh, with the majority of the regions in the country, and we remain also the majority in the National Council. Yeah. And uh, that's why now we have to build on that uh, in order to make sure that uh, what we have lost uh, during those uh, two elections of 2019, 2020, we we'll regain them yeah. and then maybe increase. So you see what happened in the by-elections uh, in uh, Walfish Bay mm -hmm. that uh, we have gained and uh, the opposition have lost even though they got the seat. Yeah. So you could see uh, all the strategies that you are working together. And uh, this is what I can bring on the table uh, for us to continue really improving on that as uh, a vice president of the party so that Swapo can come back and recover what it has lost uh, in the past uh, five years. Wonderful. We go for a quick uh, break and return with uh, Pr Deputy Prime Minister Netumana Indaitwa. NMH Ad 1 brings you news from all across Namibia. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact NMH1 at synergy.com.na. NMH at 1, your lunchtime news companion. The Regional Review brings you news, views and interviews from NMH correspondents from across the country. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact regional at synergy.com.na. We continue our conversation with uh, Swapo Vice President Tumbona Nindaitwa. Uh, you spoke about um, uh, fish rot having impacted the, the manner in which the party was voted in 2019 and 2020. Uh, particularly, you seem to be concerned about the timing of that uh, revelation. Um, but is the revelation the main, the main issue here, or is it the fact that indeed uh, fish rot allegedly happened? Uh, the 
Revelation, uh, definitely the timing uh, is a big question mark. Yeah. Uh, as for the fish rot, whether it has happened, uh, that is now, as you know, is a case in our courts. Yeah. And uh, if there's something which is in the court, uh, there must be something that had happened. Uh, nevertheless, at this point, I will not be able to go into the details about it, but uh, it is a fact that we have a court case in Namibia which is related to that particular subject matter. Mm. And uh, the, uh, how it has been brought, uh, it is brought on the eve of the elections. And uh, as uh, some people who were mentioned are uh, part members, uh, that is where I can say uh, it is designed in a manner that uh, it could have an influence mm. in the elections. So that's all what I can say mm. uh, on the question that you have just posed yeah. related to that. W when did you first become aware of this so-called fish rod scandal? Is it um, the, the theft of money that is being alleged and all these things? Is it something that you learned from the newspapers only at the time? Or has there been any point in time when you feel us were coming through to you that something was going on? I learned it when it was announced. In the newspapers? That's all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, related to that, Honorable Natumba and I, you know, I've, I've interviewed all uh, VP candidates. They've come to the show. And I've put to them things that have been said about them. Uh, the, the Prime Minister, there were issues of the farm, I put that question to her. Pwamba uh, Shifeta, I put the Kora issue to, her, to him. In your case, what has been said, you know, people, everybody says that Netumba Nandindaitwa is uh, the cleanest of all three. But there are people who came and said, but we are told that Netumba Nandindaitwa ran on the Harambe slate in 2017, which was allegedly funded with fish rod money. If you can just clear the air for me before we proceed to the other questions. Anyway, I was uh, part of the campaign, yeah. uh, which uh, was uh, in 2017. And uh, I have not been part of any of the fish rod, yeah. but uh, definitely I was part of that campaign. Uh, as you know that uh, it was a campaign, uh, people say it was a slight, yeah. but slate do operate differently. Uh, nevertheless, we were working together uh, with uh, the President, the Secretary General, the Deputy Secretary General, may he so rest in peace, uh, Comrade Maruka Usiku, and uh, that is what I know. And uh, at no point I have any extra finances that uh, uh, has come on my way, but uh, I have been moving in this campaign uh, on my own. And mm. uh, that's what I can say. Yeah. 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 The, the, um, what, what do you feel about, so there was that Harambe slate and Tim Swapo uh, slate as they were called, they competed. Um, Team Harambe won resoundingly. Um, President Hagegenko picked you uh, as his running mate uh, in 2017. Come 2022, uh, he is not. Uh, he did. He has not endorsed you in any way, like uh, it has been done for him by President Pahamba at the time, when like President Pahamba received from funny President. In those years, and people are talking about the tradition that has been set and that has been broken this, this time around. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, first, <laughs> I want to make it clear. Yeah. Uh, I, I've never been a running mate of President Genko. Okay. Because in Namibia, we don't have a system of running mate. Okay. I stood at the Six Party Congress for the position of the vice president. And I was elected 
on my own merit, with my own votes. President Genkop was elected on his own merit, on his own votes. Running mate system is when a president runs and says, if I'm elected, this one automatic become my vice president. Yeah. So I've never gone through that. So this Fair is why enough. I say I've never been a running mate of Comrade President Hage Genkop, but I stood on my own. But do you yes. agree that he, he s sort of, I don't know whether he nominated or selected, but of course selection is not how it, how it is done, but he, he definitely endorsed you. SS, SS yes, we, we, we work together. We work together. We campaign together. Yeah. Uh, and you are right. Uh, of course, I, I might say that uh, uh, these people talk about the tradition. And uh, th there is a lot of new things that are coming in Swapo. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking about the internal campaign. So it's a new uh, invasion yeah. that has come in. And uh, when we, uh, as we are moving, uh, we cannot just remain uh, in uh, what has been happening. Yeah. Uh, we, we have to change. And I must tell you that uh, as things stand now, uh, I have a very good working relations with President Hag again. And I must tell you, I really applaud uh, his uh, impartiality position mm -hmm. in towards our succession. And uh, that's why I, I, I really, really, really appreciate the position he took yeah. uh, when he made it very clear. Uh, even uh, it was uh, in the newspapers here, mm. and uh, even the recently the presidency uh, has been emphasizing on that, that uh, President Hag Genkop has no preference. Uh, he is not going to endorse anybody. He is not going to support anybody. And he will just allow a free democratic campaign uh, within the party uh, in order for us really to consolidate our inter-democratic process. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a person uh, who always work on trust, I, 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 I really in all sincerity uh, appreciate that position of, uh, of the party mm -hmm. and I respect it. And I just believe that the Namibian nation uh, has to respect, or party members has to respect uh, that. I, I have no reason to doubt the position of the president, and uh, which is really strengthening uh, the internal democratic process of succession. Mm. So to me, that is uh, something that I really, I commend him for that. Yeah. Do you think, um, uh, come my vice president, that um, the president is, uh, because there are two schools of thoughts. One school of thought is exactly the one that you articulated now, that uh, he wants to be fair to everybody. Because the power of, the, of incumbency can be so strong that if uh, he was to throw his backing behind one candidate, that it uh, unfairly disadvantages others. That is one school of thought. The other school of thought is that uh, he did this for political convenience, that he did not want to endorse you, and because he cannot say it naturally that I don't want to endorse Netumwa and Indaitwa, the only way he can do it is to go silent. Do you think he's being sincere in saying I'm not going to endorse anyone? You know, I have known President Genkop since 1974, yeah. when I first met him in New York. And since then, we have been very close. Mm. And I have no reason to doubt him and to suspect him. Mm. So that's really what I can say. And that is why I decide to get into my campaign uh, very seriously uh, because I know as uh, he has done that to strengthen our democratic process uh, I have to work with him mm -hmm. in this process uh, for ensuring that our internal democratic process is working uh, in order to strengthen our party uh, and also to make sure that uh, when 
Swapo Party is given the mandate by the people of this country to govern our country and to ensure that we provide a clear vision yeah. on where do we want to take Namibia uh, economically uh, to ensure that uh, the people of Namibia benefit from our resources. Uh, we, are done, we are doing it as a united party, yeah. uh, which is uh, guided, I keep repeating, our own principle of uh, solidarity, where we are working as a team, a freedom, where we are all free in our minds yeah. and able to bring out ideas uh, that will save the Namibian people and to do justice for all, uh, whereby social justice uh, as well as uh, uh, justice in a manner that uh, part members and citizens of Namibia are given uh, the same uh, opportunities to express themselves uh, and also to build up their own capacity and capability to perform different tasks that are needed in our developmental agenda. Absolutely. The the one thing that uh, the, the nation is complaining about um, is the state of our country at the moment. And that's why the, the Congress this week, is, this coming week, is seen as a, a really big opportunity and turning point for the country because if Swapo was to elect a capable leader, uh, that can really admit where the past couple of years have gone wrong and be willing to rectify that, that we can perhaps go back on track again. Because we were on a trajectory as a country. We cannot deny that we were on a very good trajectory. But the past couple of years have been very bad. You mentioned some of the factors, external factors, natural factors. But what kind of... Uh, head of state, if you were to be elected in the Congress and stand as the party candidate in 2024 and win, what kind of president would Netumbo Nandinetwa be? Yes, uh, you are right that um, uh, at independence, uh, we really, we, we got our independence uh, at a time when uh, the world of course, we know we were moving from the Cold War yeah. uh, to where we are today. And uh, the world economy uh, was really uh, progressively improving uh, continuously almost every year. Yeah. Uh, until when the economic crisis heated in, and uh, particularly in 2014, uh, when uh, the new government under President Genkop was to come in yeah. in 2015. Uh, that is the time really uh, we have seen uh, a, a, a very serious uh, economic crisis, uh, both internationally, that has also an impact into the Namibian economy. Mm -hmm. uh, Namibia uh, not being an island. And uh, the trend just continued throughout that uh, process. Uh, and uh, with uh, the COVID pandemic coming in, and now as it was stabilizing, then we see the crisis uh, between Russia and Ukraine, uh, which again has brought a different dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely we have it to recover. Uh, now, uh, what we need to do uh, as a country uh, first and foremost, uh, as I mentioned, we are part and parcel of the global village. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, we need also to see where is our local strength are, mm. uh, and then uh, to pay special attention to that uh, local strength. Uh, there are basic things that we really need to improve on. Uh, one is uh, for us to improve in increasing uh, the incomes 
particularly in the rural areas. Uh, in the rural areas, we need to pay attention to rural economy. Uh, in the world, there is what is called a, 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 a cooperative economy or common economy. Mm -hmm. And the common economy is an economy where you have to study what are the specific strengths in a specific locality in your country and pay attention to that. Uh, for example, uh, if we take now our regions, uh, I can start up there and you take the Zambezi region, uh, you can bring it together with Zambezi, Kavango East, Kavango West. You know exactly that these are the cream of our agriculture. The land is fertile, uh, the labor is there, maybe you need just to improve in the specific skills that are needed, and water, you could also make use of the available water because there are different technicalities that can be used. And then you really pay special attention to that. Uh, you, 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 you will be able to develop that local economy. You look at where you can develop. For example, Namibia has been known for small stock like sheep and goats. You go to an area where you can be strong on that. And I have to tell you, when it comes to a small stock, there's already a market. So you have just to make that small push. And, as, and when you are able to produce more, uh, you would have no problem with the market in the Middle East. The Arabs, they want this uh, type of meat. And uh, you look also at others like uh, the South, where you have debts, which are now produced. Increase on that because you know you cannot flood the market in this. So this is how you can look at them seriously in order to increase the income in the rural area. And then the agriculture I have mentioned, though I, I related to the rural agriculture, uh, but even our commercial agriculture, it needs a boost. Uh, history tells us that most uh, developed countries, they develop or industrialized the countries. They are industrialized through agriculture. But what we are having now is that uh, uh, we don't have really strong incentives. If we, as a nation we can sit, uh, have a discussion around and say, yes, agriculture is what we need to industrialize the, 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 the country then we must have the right incentives. You cannot have agriculture, when you, you are emphasizing on agriculture is uh, an important sector, but then all the inputs on agriculture are expensive. How do you grow it? Uh, uh, and also uh, the taxes, I know taxes are necessary. A government has to generate uh, revenue in order to service uh, other important sectors of the country economy, like education, health, and many others. So you need to tax. However, it will also to be done in a manner that it does not kill the sectors that you want to tax. So you might find in some countries, you cannot tax agriculture the same way you are taxing other industries that are less vulnerable. Because agriculture is important, but agriculture is very vulnerable. It's vulnerable to climate, it's vulnerable to natural disaster. You can plant your field and it looks so good. And a certain insect just comes and destroy all those 10 hectares within one day. So that is where you have to make sure that you help this sector in order for it really to grow our economy in order to support uh, the whole uh, economy. And uh, we have to increase the benefit of uh, our benefit from our natural resources. Namibia is a mining economy, it's a mining country. Uh, we have already started with value addition into our uh, natural resources like minerals. However, 
we need to do more. We need to do more to, uh, to do value addition. Uh, a, a classic example, you have your fish, uh, and uh, the fish is caught, and then the whole fish is taken somewhere else. Uh, where they are going now to cut the heads and then with the heads they make a fish meal and all these things. Those things should be done home uh, so that you can add the value. And when you are going to sell them, uh, having done that, even the price will go higher. So, and uh, we, we should also try really to understand the how do we negotiate with multinationals. Uh, I remember there were discussions at the AU level that one disadvantage Africa puts itself. When we are negotiating with multinationals, we see ourselves as we are on the receiving hand. We always see ourselves as we need them more than they need us. There was even a proposal that why can't we have a common understanding that when we are negotiating with multinationals, this is our bottom line. We cannot go thus far. So, which means it's possible. And uh, one can start it at the country level. It will be very difficult because they move on the other side. But once you know where your strength is, we really need to improve our negotiation skill uh, so that we get the mm, better benefit. I, I will not talk about maximum because maximum I will be having difficult to define it. But I want to say better, to move from where we are uh, to a, 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 a different level. And uh, also to create a, uh, an economy which is conducive for our local people. Yes. So how do we make sure that local entrepreneur, they should really be having special attention? Yes. Uh, because uh, local entrepreneur, uh, when they become successful, uh, it is a big plus for the country because they are reinvesting into the economy. And when they invest in the economy, then the government will have a bigger base of revenue collection. So that is where I, I, I always explain to say, I believe in two types of uh, development. You have a revenue generation development state whereby the state has a responsibility to make sure that they collect the revenue that is necessary for the government to improve on the services that are required for the country to develop. Yes. And the example is education. You need the necessary skills. Uh, you need people who can perform different tasks. And for this to be done, uh, these sectors, they do not generate revenue. They have to be fed. And that's why the government has to collect the revenue. You need health. A health nation is what can take you somewhere. But health does not generate necessarily immediately. It's only by implication. When people are health and they become more productive. When people are having necessary skills, then they become more productive. And then you'll be able to have more income. So that one has to be respected, has to be taken care of. By then you have what is known as a developmental state economy. This one now is a, an economy whereby the state has to develop incentives, incentives to allow the business community, the entrepreneurs to grow, and even individuals instead of taxing them to the bone, let them have their savings and reinvest those savings in order to grow the economy, thus enabling the state to collect more revenue. Th these are the things that together we will sit around, discuss them and see. And then another thing is job creation. Yes. Uh, through this, you are creating jobs. And that's why it is quite necessary that we must have a strong link between the market and the education sector. Yeah. The education sector must understand what is needed in the market so that they can train for the market. 
the education sector should not train for the street. They should train for the market. Uh, now we are talking about in Namibia, we have green hydrogen. We are talking about having discovered oil and gas. Do we have people when now time comes for these resources to be exploited? Do we have people who will be employed in those sectors? Or we just want our people to be employed there as uh, cleaners and so on. So that's why I would like to see that the education sector and the market, they talk together. The more people you employ, the more you fight poverty and the more you develop the country. And another thing that we have to look at, uh, when we talk about uh, economic empowerment, we have to find a way to ensure that we empower as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. You cannot just empower a small group yeah. because first of all, it will not be in favor of the small group you are empowering mm -hmm. because you are delinking these people, that group from the rest of the population. Yeah. And there will be some certain of hostility. That's one. Two, you are even giving them a big burden because they are the ones who are empowered. Everybody will run to them. I have this program, I have this program, I have this program. And then it will also not be health to them. But if you empower the majority of the people, if you empower many, they will be able to help those who are not empowered also for them to improve on their own living of standard. And in that way, that's how you are bringing about a balanced, shared prosperity. And uh, with the right mind, with uh, people, we, we are saying we must adopt an attitude of one heart, one mind. Yeah. And in that way, we will be able really to address the challenges that we are facing. And we have to diversify our economy uh, so that the rural, I mean the local people, should have room to move everywhere. Uh, this does not mean we do not respect the international community or foreign direct investment. They should come in, yeah. but then the terms have to be complementary to what we want with our local entrepreneurs. Absolutely. That was a very eloquent uh, articulation of your policy position, uh, 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 Minister. The, when you speak about not empowering a, s a small group of people, because mm -hmm. that is also one of the problems, the perceived problem in Swapo today is the issue of patronage. You have to be seen to be singing praise for these particular leaders in order for that leader to sort of return the favor and empower you as an individual. It's a chronic problem that uh, I think anybody who's in Swapo knows that uh, there are indeed uh, such a problem of patronage. Uh, to become a CEO of a, a, of a parastatal, you are required silently to be in the Swapo database as a member uh, and perhaps even a member in good standing. While you have people who are simply not interested in politics, but they have the capabilities to lead our country from point A to point B. In terms of, um, how, how would you address patronage in Swapo? And what are you going to, what favors are in for those that are supporting you right now? <laughs> First of all, I, I don't seek for favors. And I'm telling you, even people who are supporting me, they know that. Uh, there are those who have already even made statements. Uh, because for me, I believe that uh, each and every Namibian is to benefit from our natural resources. And that is why even in the position where I am, when uh, I'm a Minister of International Relations, and uh, it is my responsibility to link Namibia to the outside world, both politically and even economically. And there's quite a number of Namibians that I have introduced to the potential investors, 
because uh, it's my responsibility to bring in investors and introduce them into the Namibian economy. And at no point I sought any favor or given any favor by any of this. Because what I believe on is when one flourish, the whole country will flourish. So what is required is only that each and everyone, you should do this in the best interest of the Namibian people. So favor is something that can kill the system. Uh, if you are doing something serving an individual, then you know that the system in the long run might collapse or you will not develop. You are just going to move in circles. So you really need to take people whom you know that they have the capacity and the capability to perform. And uh, they can be found all over. Uh, some can be SWAPO members, some can be other party members, uh, some can be non-party. And what you need is to see the growth of the uh, economy of the country. And uh, also to see the parastitals. Uh, in fact, the parastitals uh, are, are, are coming out of our own uh, uh, constitution eh? because uh, we have adopted a mixed economy. And the policy of mixed economy simply means the state must have the, 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 the role to play in the economy. And uh, that's why parastitals are, are, are established. And uh, people who are being given responsibility to run parastitals, they must be people with capability. I, I wouldn't really want to see uh, this state of affair where you have parastitals which are collapsing one after the other. Uh, we rather not maybe establish them. Maybe somewhere establish not necessary. And that's why I say uh, with the experience we have gained over the years, which is a very strong base for us to build on, uh, we really need to continuously revive and reverse our program and decide on which way to go uh, so that we can really address the challenges our people are facing, particularly the unemployment. It's so sad to see young people unemployed. And these young people are the future uh, of any given country, including Namibia. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to pay special attention to create jobs for our young people. And we have also, when we talk about entrepreneur, special attention should be given to young entrepreneur. And we should also find a way to incorporate them into decision making. And uh, these are the things that we have to look into. And how do we establish a good working relationship between the workers and the industries? Uh, because um, that's very important. And remember, SWAP is a workers' party. <laughs> it is formed out of the workers. And if you look into the SWAP or political program, a good relationship between the workers and the industry is emphasized. So these are the things we need when we look into our economic development uh, in order really to ensure and bring about sustainable development and not just to be talking about growth, 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 but we are now focusing on sustainable development, the development that we can sustain. And uh, the development you can sustain is when you have a growth that is creating jobs. Wonderful. Uh, Vice President, it was a pleasure having you on the show. I wish we had more time, but uh, thank you for, having, for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm waiting to go to the Congress. Yes, all the best. And the uh, swap of part members, delegates, I'm here and uh, give me a second term. And Wonderful. together we will continue. And I will be ready to lead the uh, Namibian people to prosperity. Wonderful. Based on the strong foundation we have created since independence. Wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, mm. that is. Uh, Natumara Nindaitwa, she's uh, vying to retain her position as Vice President of SWAPO at the Congress later this week. Thank you for watching. The Evening Review is a daily interview-based talk show that dissects and expounds on current affairs as they occur in Namibia. The show aims at reaching Namibians of all age groups who seek better understanding of the state of current affairs in the country. 
This show is broadcasted on NTV, OneUp2.com and CrossShared on the following Facebook platforms, Namibian Sun and Namibia Media Holdings. The Evening Review focuses on interviews, latest news and up-to-the-minute current events. Contact evening at synergy.com.na Evening Review Unpacking today's pertinent issues.